In the heart of the Ottoman Empire, there existed a formidable force known as the Janissaries, meaning new soldiers in Ottoman Turkish. These infantry units served as the personal guards and bodyguards of the Ottoman Sultan, tracing their origins back to the 14th century. Picture this, a diverse group of young boys, predominantly non-Muslim, captured in wars and hailing mainly from the Balkans. These boys were the raw material for the Janissaries, an elite force that played a crucial role in the Ottoman Empire's major campaigns. Led into battle by the Sultan himself, these soldiers earned their keep not just through loyalty but also a share of the spoils. The Janissaries were no ordinary army, they marked the rebirth of a full-time, trained standing force, a concept not seen since the days of the Roman Empire. Their innovative tactics and military prowess were instrumental in key historical events such as the capture of Constantinople in 1453 and conflicts against the Egyptian Mamluks, Hungary, and Austria. As time passed, however, the Janissaries faced challenges. Despite their initial technological innovation and equipment, they struggled to modernize. Some argue that the Janissaries' role extended beyond military might. They saw themselves as guardians of good governance. This legacy, it is said, endured in the modern nation-state of Turkey. The Janissaries' origin story goes back to Sultan Murad I, who founded the units around 1365, initially composed of non-Muslims, including Christian youth and prisoners of war. The Janissaries offered an opportunity for those under Muslim rule, like the Bogomils of Bosnia, to join the elite. The Ottomans skillfully absorbed Byzantine Greek and Slav elites into their military traditions by allowing conversion to Islam for further advancement. These Janissaries represented the first Ottoman standing army, replacing tribal Ghazis whose loyalty was not always assured. As the Ottoman standing army expanded with additional corps, collectively known as Kapkulu, the term Janissary came to be used incorrectly but interchangeably for all of the Ottoman Kapkulu corps. The Janissaries, born from the strategic mind of Sultan Murad I, that shaping the destiny of the Ottoman Empire through their loyalty, military skill, and enduring legacy. Continuing the tale of the Janissaries, their significance extended far beyond their military prowess. These elite soldiers donned uniforms, received regular cash payments, and marched to the rhythmic beats of the Mater, a distinctive music reminiscent of a modern marching band. Such characteristics set them apart from the conventional soldiers of their time. The Ottomans, under the Janissaries' banner, became the first state in Europe since the Roman Empire to maintain a standing army. These soldiers were likened to the Roman Praetorian Guard, a force unparalleled in the Christian armies of the era, where feudal lords raised troops during wartime. The Janissary Regiment was more than a military unit, it was a tight-knit family. During peacetime, they resided in their barracks, doubling as policemen and firefighters. Recognizing the advantages of a well-trained regular army, Christian rulers like John Hunyadi, who had once faced the Janissaries in battle, began forming their own disciplined forces. One distinctive feature of the Janissary Corps was their regular cash salaries, a departure from the prevailing practice of paying troops only during wartime. The Sultan himself, embodying solidarity, would dress as a Janissary and personally receive his salary alongside the troops. As warfare evolved, the Janissaries adapted early to the effectiveness of firearms. By the 16th century, the musket had become their primary weapon, complemented by the use of grenades and hand cannons like the Abbas gun. The Janissaries operated as a well-organized military machine, with auxiliary support systems setting them apart. From preparing roads to pitching tents and baking bread, each aspect was meticulously organized. The Sebasi Corps distributed weapons and ammunition, while the Janissary Corps had its internal medical auxiliaries, including Muslim and Jewish surgeons who traveled with the troops, ensuring proper care for the wounded and sick. Foreigners of the time marveled at these differences and the Janissary's impressive war record, making them a subject of fascination and study. Despite the eventual dissolution of the Janissary Corps as the concept of the modern army took hold, their image endured as a symbol of the Ottomans in the Western psyche. Now, we delve into their recruitment, training, and esteemed status within the Ottoman Empire. In the early days, Janissary units were filled with war captives and slaves, selected through a process known as the Pensik Rule, where one in five were chosen for enrollment. However, under Sultan Mehmet I, a new method called Divsherme emerged. This involved the conscription of non-Muslim boys from the Balkans, usually Christians, who were taken at birth and raised as Muslims to be trained as Janissaries. While other Christians often killed their Turkish captives, the Ottomans adopted a different approach, 
enslaving them as booty if they were under the age of 20. Greeks and Albanians were initially favored for recruitment, but as the empire expanded, the Dufshirme also included Bulgarians, Romanians, Armenians, Serbs, and later even Poles, Ukrainians, and Southern Russians. Training for the Janissaries was rigorous and disciplined, resembling monastic conditions. They underwent hard labor and strict rules, including celibacy and conversion to Islam. They were forbidden from wearing beards, a symbol of Muslim identity, and were taught to consider themselves as belonging to the Sultan, with the title Kapkulu, signifying their bond. Only the strongest and most dedicated earned the rank of true Janissary, usually by the age of 24 or 25. The regiment operated as a tight-knit family, inheriting the property of deceased members and accumulating wealth over time. They followed the teachings of the dervish, Saint Haji Bektash Wali, who served as their spiritual guide. In return for their loyalty and dedication in battle, Janissaries enjoyed privileges such as a cash salary, wartime booty, and a respected social status. Initially confined to barracks and forbidden from marrying or engaging in other trades, by the mid-18th century they had gained the right to marry, enroll their children in the corps, and pursue various professions. Many Janissaries transitioned into roles as administrators and scholars, marking a departure from their original military purpose. This evolution contributed to the decline of the Janissary system, as their focus shifted away from warfare towards other pursuits. As the Janissary Corps flourished, its structure and significance within the Ottoman Empire became increasingly apparent. The Janissary troops, ranging in strength from a few thousand to over a hundred thousand, were organized into orders, each headed by a sorbasai. Together, these orders formed the Janissary Corps, known as Osiak, with the Sultan as its supreme commander. The corps was divided into three sub-corps, the Samat, the Beyliks or Buluks, and the Sekben or Sernan. Additionally, there were cadet units known as Ajemi. Originally, promotion within the Janissary ranks was based on seniority within one's own orta. Janissaries were trained as archers but quickly adopted firearms as they became available. They excelled in engineering, particularly during sieges, and wielded axes and sabers in melee combat. The Ottomans utilized the Janissaries in all their major campaigns, from the capture of Constantinople to conflicts with Hungary and Austria. Led by the Sultan himself, they earned a share of the booty from their conquests. As the Janissaries grew in power and wealth, they began to desire a better life, sparking revolts demanding higher wages and better conditions. These revolts highlighted their increasing influence and corruption, eventually leading to their forcible disbandment by Mamutu in 1826. Interestingly, while the Pope attempted to prevent the sale of arms to the Janissaries, Protestant Europeans, particularly the Dutch and English, became their main suppliers. Janissary music, characterized by its powerful and distinctive sound, influenced European classical musicians such as Mozart and Beethoven. Despite their eventual demise, the legacy of the Janissaries endured. Their role as a pressure group, advocating for the interests of the Turkish nation, and their contribution to military music continued to reverberate through history. Today, the Janissary military band, Mater, stands as a testament to their enduring influence, performing during national holidays and historical events.